Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Emily Wood, Partner and Chief Client Officer here at Connecticut Wealth Management. Today we're talking about fear, and really working through fear as a parent of a child with special needs, um, specifically autism. I'm here today and joined by my friend Lisa Candera, who is an attorney. She's a certified life coach, a full-time single mom of a teen with autism, anxiety, and OCD. And she's also the founder of the Autism Mom Coach. Uh, she founded this program in 2021 to offer one-on-one -on -one coaching to parents uh, who are working with a, a child navigating autism or another special need. Um, so I'm excited to be joined by Lisa today. Lisa, tell us you know, what inspired you to create this project? Sure, well, thank you so much for having me. Um, well, so last year, my son and I went through some really difficult times and it was a lot for me to manage him through it and I found myself really struggling. And I was looking for resources to help me just manage my own anxiety and fear around that. And I found it really difficult actually. And so what, you know, there were people who were telling me things like you have to take care of yourself and you need to take time for yourself. And it really just fell on deaf ears. Cause I, my question was, is like, how can I be okay when mm. he's not? Yeah. How can I manage my own anxiety when he's melting down? And so through a year of really working through a lot of these emotions and a lot of my own fears, I created a framework that I use for myself and that I teach my clients for really how to keep your, how to um, keep your cool while your child's melting down. That's wonderful. We're going to give an example of that framework later. You know, we talked a lot about fear. What I also hear a lot in, in helping parents navigate similar challenges, fear comes up a lot yeah. um, because there's a lot of uncertainty. The landscape is consistently changing. Um, and I hear that, that fear and uncertainty and, and perhaps even a sense of overwhelm um, as a child is approaching 18, as they are approaching this independence or, or falling off the cliff, as we've talked mm -hmm. about, they're concerned about what benefits may or may not be available to them. Able account or no able account, right? Should I do that? Estate planning, care plans, I mean, you name it. It can just be a sea of information to work through. So so you've, you've been there, you're living this, you're mm -hmm. working with clients. What is your advice for folks who, again, are, are in that mode of fear and overwhelm and uncertainty? Sure, so the first thing that I teach them is that, is what we call the think, feel, act cycle. Our thoughts create our feelings and our feelings drive our actions. And our child turning 18, that's just the circumstance that triggers the thought, feeling, action. And we get to choose how we want to think and feel and therefore act about any circumstance in our life. So we start there. The circumstance is your child turning 18. How are you thinking about it now? And now if the thought is, I don't know what to do, or say it's I don't know what to do, and you're feeling fear. What do you do when you're feeling fear? Do you set up an appointment with a lawyer? Do you set up an appointment with a financial specialist? Probably not. Instead, you ruminate, you have worst case scenarios in your head, you avoid, and as a result, you aren't prepared, right? Mm -hmm. You're basically proving that original thought true. I'm not prepared, and when that thought is creating feeling, that feeling, that emotion is fueling all of your action and your inaction. So that's where we like to start. What are the thoughts that you're currently having and what are they producing for you? And then we look at, well, what do you want to produce? Like what's yeah. the result that you want? And then we work on how we can bridge the gap, you know? I love that model of just keeping it simple, thought, feel, act. Um, and there's just so many lines of synergy to how we work and, and the financial plans that we draft to work through those worst case scenarios and to focus and get really crystal clear about what is the result or action that you want yes. and then how do we get there together. Um, so I think there's just so many lines of synergy in our work and, and you shared with me um, a question, what's the next right thing I can do? Say a little bit more about yeah. that. Yep, so as special needs parents, we're always worried about whether we're doing enough or whether we're doing the right things. And that be can come, become overwhelming because there's so much information out there. There's so much, so many opinions out there. And so where I've tried to retrain my brain is to focus on what's 
the next right thing to do in this moment. And maybe it's not the next right thing to do, like, you know, you know, a, a year from now, but right now, what is the next right decision? And that has helped me focus my decisions, make decisions and move on as opposed to spin out in doubting myself and polling other people and wondering whether I'm doing the right thing. And then at the end, doing nothing at all. Mm. Such a helpful framework uh, again, Lisa. And, and I, I empathize with parents who are navigating, you know, similar life circumstances where there's just a sea of information. And that sea of information, whether it be medical, legal, financial, you name it, there's a lot of, um, there's a lack of objectivity there too, mm -hmm. oh, which, yeah. which can make it very difficult to discern what is the right decision or yep. what is the right next action. <clears throat> um, so just to comment that, I feel so honored when a client allows us into their financial life to help them objectively find that next right action that they can take. Yeah, and I think that's such an important piece of it because for me, the most helpful thing in my parenting, whether it's my parenting one-on-one -on -one with my child or in my parenting decisions is, where can I make it less personal? Because mm. when you're taking things personally, you really get wrapped up in the emotion of it and you're not seeing the whole picture. And so I do like the framework in that way where when I was doing this myself, I wanted to create a will and I did not have a will, but all of my thoughts about it were, well, who will I name as a possible guardian? And I got really, really stuck on that. And, and so as a result, I wasn't naming anyone. And when I saw that result, I was like, well, that's not the result that I want. I definitely think it's better to have a will. I definitely think it's better for people to know what my wishes are. And so although there's these other things that are uncomfortable about it, I don't want those things to get in the way of me creating the result that I want. Absolutely, see that so, so frequently. Um, so we've talked about a lot today in just a short period of time, you know, some models for thought, feel, act to help get crystal clear about what you want and how to work through emotions, um, to take the next best action, the next right action that you can, um, and to navigate a sea of information with objectivity. So I can't thank you enough for sharing with us. Um, and our watchers. And if you have any questions or reactions to um, some of the material that we've discussed today, I encourage you to reach out and certainly to check out uh, Lisa's podcast, The Autism Mom Coach. We'll link to that here below. Thanks so much for spending some time with us. Take care.